Singapore Airlines, I'm a big fan. But their new regional business class seat, not so much. Join me on this short hop from Bangkok to Singapore. The full experience, coming up. Welcome aboard Singapore Airlines. This is the first leg of my trip back home to Saigon, a very short journey that managed to take over 16 hours. Today's flight took off to the north from Bangkok Suwanapum Airport to the east of the city center. We used runway 01 right and eventually reached a cruising altitude of 41,000 feet on our 876 mile journey into Singapore's Changi Airport, runway 02 left. Suwanapum Airport is a 40-minute drive from central Bangkok and will cost you 400 to 600 baht depending on the time of day and the tolls that you'll need to use. I've been here a few times in the past month and I'm happy to see that the travel experience here seems to be getting a bit more normal each time I pass through, though Thai Airways still has a huge chunk of their fleet parked for now. Check-in took me a matter of minutes and I was soon through priority immigration and security from getting my luggage wrapped to being airside in just 22 minutes. A bit about my unusual fare. This has just changed in Vietnam, but prior to January, there were no commercial flights into Vietnam. They were all considered repatriation flights and the point of sale had to be in Vietnam. So this one-way economy fare from Bangkok to Saigon via Singapore was a ridiculous $550. For the first sector, I bid to upgrade for $145 as I would have had to pay almost that much in baggage overage charges with my 80 kilos of stuff that I was bringing back. The international terminal here has a lot of construction going on. Part of it is refreshing all of the retail outlets and the other is building the new train that will take passengers to the new satellite terminal. Singapore Airlines does have a lounge at the airport, but it's not currently open, so the friendly agent very specifically told me to go to the Thai lounge in the E concourse. Well, it was closed, and I didn't have time to walk all the way back to the D gates to check if she was just wrong about the concourse. So I went to the always reliable Oman Air Lounge. Besides the fact that it doesn't have any great views from the lounge, the Oman Air Lounge is my favorite priority pass lounge at the airport. There's always a decent selection of food available, though it was pretty limited right now. And even before COVID, it was never more than half full in my experience. There are plenty of drinks on offer, and anytime you put a box like this in front of me, I'm going to be happy for quite a while. There are a couple workstations and plenty of seating in the adjoining room, including two day sleepers. Soon enough, it was time to head to gate E3 for SQ711. Our ride today was a two-year-old Airbus A350-900 in Singapore's regional configuration, featuring 40 seats in business class and 263 in economy. For their regional A350s and all 787s, SQ uses the Stelia Aerospace seat that you'll also find on Turkish Airlines. For me, the best seats are the true window seats in row 12, 15, 17, and 20. If you're traveling with someone, you might prefer the honeymoon seats in the center section. My seat for today was 15 kilo. The fit and finish of the seats is very nice and very SQ. But the seats themselves, I'm not really a fan of. If you're broad in the shoulders, the cocoon-like surround might not be that comfortable for you. Keep in mind, these seats are used on flights as far away as Adelaide. That surround also means that you need to lean quite a bit forward in order to talk to your partner if you're not traveling alone. The seats have USB and universal outlets hidden in the side cubby along with your COVID care kit and noise-canceling headphones. 
For the short hop, your pre-departure drink is limited to a bottle of water. Seat controls are easily accessible, but luckily not easily accidentally pushed. Personally, the two reasons I really don't enjoy the seat are the wing, which has all your personal reading lights, that entirely blocks your view from the closest window. These seats are optimized for Boeing 787s, which have a narrower cabin. So you're gonna find a lot of wasted space that would have been nice to be able to reclaim into the footwells. The IFE screen though is large and tilts so that you can find the best viewing angle. Overall, not a bad product and fine for a regional flight. Pushback was a few minutes late, but absolutely no complaints from me as it timed our takeoff with this incredible sunset. Soon enough, we were taxiing on our way to runway 01 right, passing plenty of wide bodies and aircraft in storage along the way. And then the spool up snuck up on me, almost missed it. And then I was just about to complain that I was on the wrong side of the plane to see that spectacular sunset, but I luckily was about to speak too soon. Now that is a view that I could look at all day long. We started our track south to Singapore and around 20 minutes after takeoff, dinner service began. The tray table pulls out from under the IFE screen and can be used half or fully open. Dinner tonight was standard fare for a regional flight, though I did order a beef dish with creamy polenta from Book the Cook, which was just as good as airplane beef can be. Around 30 minutes after the quick dinner service finished up, we were on our final descent already into Changi, where I got my boats as always. Lucky for me, because of the limited flight schedules, I had to stay at the airport overnight. So I reserved a room at the Air Hotel for a ridiculous 341 Sing dollars. 
a price that might just be worth it depending on your layover. I'm not going to do a full review, so let's just briefly show you around. Check-in was an absolute mess, with at least 30 people waiting for their rooms. I'm not sure if they reserved in advance or were just walk-ups. I had a reservation for 11pm, and by 11.30 the room still was not ready, and honestly, it seemed like first gear was the only gear that they had here. So I literally just stood by the check-in desk for 15 minutes, and magically, my room was ready, ahead of literally everyone else standing around me. The room itself was nicer than I expected to be honest. Cost aside, it was great, as far as windowless airport hotel rooms go at least. Had everything you needed and included a free meal, though that is probably best skipped. And so, on to the flip-flop score. The seat, not my favorite, at a 5. Service was great as usual with full marks. The lounge, well, there was none when there should have been. For cleanliness and ease of using the website, full 10s. Food selection and taste were a 9 and an 8 respectively. Entertainment, amenities, and connectivity were all solid as well. Overall, a 77 out of 100. Not great but a big chunk of that comes from the lounge being closed. I hope you found this review helpful and will check back in to see my next segment and my quarantine hotel in Saigon. Please give this video a like and subscribe to see two new flight or hotel reviews every week. It really helps the channel out.